Good day, everyone. Today, we have an exciting opportunity to delve into the world of Microsoft Visio. It's a powerful tool for technology professionals and business analysts. Whether you are new to Visio or looking to enhance your existing skills knowledge, this session is designed to help you harness the full potential of the software. I've been using this software for the last 10 years and I've used it for various process mapping, flow diagrams, and I've also had the opportunity to review and give feedback to colleagues, mapping extensive number of processes, engaging with stakeholders, and ensuring that Visio gives stakeholders the benefits and value that they need from the whole process. As we go through this overview, it should help you sign it into Visio, start using Visio, once you've signed in on one of the uh, plans, you should be able to start using it extensively. And secondly, as well, there are quite a number of examples online that I'll just share with you. And I'll recommend that you go along, map it. The first skill for understanding or being a pro at Visio is pick an existing process, just map it and be good at what you do. So now what I'll do is I'll take us into the Visio interface and then we'll immediately start mapping the process to support our understanding of Visio. So I'll bring my Visio up and then we'll start off immediately. So I'll share my screen now. So I hope Yes, so here is my screen and you can see I've already got a few diagrams here, but I want to start from scratch, giving you an overview of the interface. So first, go online, look for Microsoft Visio. Just type in Microsoft Visio into the Bing chat or Google chat will give you access to Microsoft Visio's um, interface. So here I would go looking for Microsoft official site for Microsoft Visio. Once I've typed in Microsoft Visio up here. So I'll click on it. And once you click on it, it brings up Microsoft Visio and plans. It's noticed um, in the UK. So it's uh, giving me a Visio plan in pounds. It's four pound 10 per month, or you could try it for free for one month. And after using it for a month, I know you would like to continue using Visio instead of going for a one-time purchase. I would recommend try the Visio plan and continue using it and practicing it. There will be times where you would not be using Visio uh, for a while as a business analyst or as a technology professional, but I would just recommend that at any point in time, you can go back, take a look at it and improve on your Visio skills. So let's go try for one month for free. You enter your email address, enter the necessary details, and it gives you the opportunity to start using it for free. Alternatively, you could also say buy now, and then same, it asks you for your email address. Once you enter your email address, you go next. So let me try one of my other email addresses. William Cosina at hotmail.co.uk. So once you've got your email address in, you click next. Um, it says, looks like you need to create a new account. Let's get started. Set up account. Then you go set up account. You enter all your details and then um, you can choose to accept if you want Microsoft to continue sharing necessary information. Enter all your details and create um, an account. After creating an account, you are able to log in into an account. So let me, so, so signing up for Visio, I've already created my account. So I've logged in into my account. When you log into your account, you see a blank interface and what you can start off by just starting off is just going for the new blank drawing 
So click on the new blank drawing. When you click on the new blank drawing, you get this Visio stencil. I'll go through the Visio stencil for us to understand what is in the Visio stencil. Just like Microsoft Word, you can save um, any documentation. So you go, when you click on file, there's info, save as, print, share, and about for Microsoft Visio. And you can also um, select a new Microsoft Visio diagram, or you can look through the templates that are available. Initially, when I landed on the new diagram pages, there were uh, various templates available. You could also go insert. You could insert a picture, um, go into your pictures, and then pick a picture to insert into Visio. And you could have an online picture, stock images, draw a shape. Um, there are various shapes here. The ellipse, uh, the rectangle, the square, the line. Uh, the key shapes that you'll find in uh, drawing a Visio diagram. You can then look at the designs, you can make, identify themes, you can identify theme colors, and then you have connectors, then you can also look at the diagramming layout you want. Um, usually when I'm carrying out a Microsoft, uh, let's say I'm carrying out a Visio uh, process mapping, the focus is using swim lanes and in this particular session i'll focus on swim lanes for us to understand how to use swim lanes strongly then there's the review to check all the information you've added then you can also view it you can view it in reading view page breaks and it's more like your microsoft web document now that we have an overview of visio if you buy the plan too, you can open Visio in a desktop. Um, I prefer using Visio online because it's got um, a lot of, let's say it's got a lot of functions that I could easily use when I'm using it online. Why I would use the desktop function is when I use a tech desktop function, I'm able to easily number my diagrams and I'll use both for us in today's session so that you get a good good understanding of how to use Visio. So what do we want to do? Let's say for our first exercise, we really want to map a process. So I would identify a process that we would like to map. And here are various examples of processes. So there's a simple loan processing diagram that has been mapped. And we can see that We've got three actors. We've got the customer as a customer service as an actor. We've got a system as an actor, and then we've got back office as an actor. So how do I go about mapping this particular process? So the first step is to come into the shapes. And if I come back to home, I'll click into the shapes and say, okay, I want a swim lane. So when you type swim lane, you click enter. It says there are no swim lane shapes. So you can always swim lane. Then you click on swim lanes. It brings up the swim lane stencil diagrams that you can move onto your um, chart. So let's say I want to have a swim lane first i'll move this and it creates uh, the things i want to see and you can extend it to the very end so that you have a good overview so you can scroll it up scroll it down so i want to bring it down a bit so that i stay on one page so in doing that i can see it's giving me access to one page but it's extended it more than the page size I want so I'll move it a bit yes so this is an ideal page size for my visio diagram and I'll keep it in between the visio diagram and not extend it more than the visio diagram so now that I have the diagram here so I can go into the title and say loan processing as my title. Then I know in my earlier document, I had 
um, three actors. So what would I do? I, I would like to have the three actors. So first I had my customer service. How do I add an additional swim lane? Go to the site where you've got your um, swim lanes, then you pick it and add it. Once you see the red line, it means you can leave it to drop on. So what I can see is it's not added in the way I want it. So I'll, I'll just click Control Z, Control Z or Undo. To, so you can use the Undo button or the Control Z. So let me see, I want to bring it. So this time I've brought it, it's not created a new diagram for me. I want to extend the whole diagram a bit. So yeah, I want to keep it in between the table and not extend it beyond the table. So I knew I had three actors. So what system? And then I'll add an extra one. Once I see that it's not aligning, it's still not aligning the way I, do, I want it. I'll do the control Z and then bring it back again. I'll go and grab the swim lane and then link it. Once you link it, you keep working on it till it just, yes, perfect. Can I, I can pick a swim lane, extend the swim lane um, diagram. So if I pick a single swim lane, I can always open it up and close the diagram. Yeah. Make sure I have more space in the diagram. Yeah. So you can always extend, close, and make your diagram look perfect as it is. To map a process map, I'll make a list of some things we need to have. In my one, we need the process name. What is the name of the process? Secondly, we need actors. An actor can be a team, a person, or a system. So we've got a team, customer service. We've got a system. And then we've got back office. So we've got our actors. Then we need the process overview. These are three key requirements. Why do I say we need these three? You need to know the process name. And the process name will come out of the work you've done initially. So during our process mapping course, we talked about the boss card. In the boss card, we've got the background, objectives, scope. What's the scope of work we are working on? The scope of work is to just map the loan processing and it will have a clear definition of a beginning and it will have a clear definition of an end. We, we can't map the whole loan processing which interacts with other processes. We, we are only focusing on a part of the loan processing um, steps or journey to help us understand that particular uh, part of the journey. So we will detail out the process overview. So I've talked about the background, which is the background of why we are doing what we are doing. Then we will have the objectives. What are the objectives? What do we seek to achieve as an outcome when we map these processes? Once you have your background, let me just put the boss card here so that we all can see it and it will help us. So let's say our background and this is a document you should have produced before coming down to start mapping a process what are the objectives of mapping this particular process what is the scope of work that needs to be done what are the constraints do i have six months do i have four months do i have five months to do this particular work and then what are the assumptions when i map this process and we implement it is going to fix the entire process and we are going to solve all the problems we have and what are the roles or sometimes you could also add the risk 
so that you gather some more information about the process you intend to map. And then what are the deliverables? When mapping a process map, you can have um, the supporting documents, which is the research you've done. Then you have the as is process, which is the current state process. And then you can then have your to be process, which is the future state of the process. And the to be process comes as a result of the gap analysis work you've done. So we've got our uh, background objective scope cons constraints. We also have an overview of our assumptions, roles, risks, deliverables. We can now start mapping a process map. But this is an extensive amount of work that the business analyst has to do in their role when mapping a process. When mapping a process, you wouldn't just jump onto Visio and start diagramming it out. You need some background work. Some of the background work is identify the process using your boss card, carry out an extensive um, understanding of that particular uh, process through document analysis, interviews, and you can also use a workshop dependent on the type of process and the stakeholders you have. Once you've done your first workshop, you can then map an as is process so that you can share it, get feedback, identify improvement actions, and then start implementing a to be process. For this particular exercise, we are only looking at picking up an existing process and then mapping it as it is. And it's for me, it's the first thing for every business analyst who wants to master the art of process mapping. First, pick up an existing process, look at how it is, start mapping it, add the shapes, add the diagrams. And once you first can map moving the shapes and the diagrams onto the process, you've made your first step to understanding processes. And then when you do the legwork, which is the preconditions to starting to map the process, this stage becomes easy. I even think this stage is the easiest, but the pre-work that needs to be done to get to this stage is what you, the business analyst, would have to do to make sure that your processes work for you. So let's use the diagram we've just seen. So we can look at it. We've got the swim lanes here. We can take a look at the arrow shapes. And then we can take a look at the basic steps. We've got the basic steps here. And when mapping processes, we use the ellipse. And the ellipse is used to show your stats. And it's also used to show the end. I think for most process mapping, when you, are, when you start using this diagram, you are more mapping for techies. But for the business owners, you want to make it simple for them so that they can easily understand the process you are mapping. So here are some examples of the processes I've mapped. Let me go back to where we were. And then we continue from there. Drawing number three. the loan process mapping so we are back to our diagram which is the loan process mapping i think we've got it's already here as well we can always go back to it i've got a diagram here that i did quite recently for um an organizational chart and a few others i've been working on and they've all decided to pop up but let me go back to this particular one. so for the loan processing um a request for a loan. How will the request for loan come? For, from a customer's point, they can come through a phone call. They can come as an email. The customer can walk into a bank and the customer can now even request for loans through the bank's social media sites and then go through the process. 
of getting a loan once they complete all the necessary requirements. So there's a request for a loan. It's the trigger to start the process. So a request for loan. Um, the next step is we need to, once you bring your first ellipse, you, uh, you can then start using that to populate. You don't have to go back, pull in, uh, go and pull a shape and bring it back. I think Visio has done a great job as a very versatile tool for mapping complex diagram by adding this feature where you just click at the very end and then you connect. So the rectangle, the rectangle is for key activities when mapping processes. So uh, cre create a loan code, yeah. Loan code for customer. So once a loan code has been created for the customer, the next step in the process is for us to what um, perform a customer verification and that will be done by the customer service team so same here we go here so the next step is uh, determine perform customer verification and then we determine if the customer is capable of getting the loan If you're going to map a process, I do recommend just sticking to um, four shapes. The first is you have your ellipses, simple as it is, your ellipses is for your start and end. If you stick to these four shapes at the very end, or I said from the very beginning, it will help you with the process. So the ellipses is for your start and end. Your rectangles are for key activities. And then we've got our decisions, which are the diamonds. The diamonds help us in making decisions. And for each diamond, you need to add a question. Is the customer verified or has verification passed? Has verification being accepted and that's a question once you have this question you would have things that will get out of the things that will you can form out of it the next can be an action inform the customer or uh, we can go back and so ask the customer, you can just link it up and say, okay, I need to link it up. Ask customer to supply details. Ask customer, request customer details instead of. So you can put your no here and you can put your yes here. So what I would do is I would like to do this differently. Instead of that, I'll just bring it this way and put a no here. And then here, I'll just, you can, once the plus sign comes in, it allows you to draw a connector easily without having to go back, where's my connector and connecting it. Um, Visio is so versatile, you can now just use the plus sign to create connectors and it makes your life easy. So if I look at it, um, start customer needs alone, request customer details, has customer verification been accepted in the system? If yes, inform the customer and you can bring it in between here where we inform the customer or if no, we go back and request um, necessary details until the customer can be verified and then we can give them a loan. If the customer cannot be verified then uh, we will go through this loop and we need an end to the loop um, to come to a point where the customer's process cannot continue and then we end the process. Yeah. So when mapping the process, you need to add this 
three, let's say these three shapes to start it. You can use the ellipses to start and then the ellipses to end. The ellipses starts the process, the ellipses ends the process. It's a must. At any point in time, we should be able to see a start and an end. The rectangles are for key activities. So you want to use your verb nouns, request customer details, um, ask customer for bank details. So you are using your verb noun. There needs to be an action. What's the verb? What's the noun? When you come to the diamond, it's questions. The questions would allow you to proceed to the next step or to uh, proceed to another step. And you would use the diamonds quite a lot in mapping your processes. If you map a process and there are no diamonds, then your process is flawed. There needs to be that step where you ask the customer a question and then the question is used to take a decision. When you map a process and it's just the happy path, then you can go straight without having diamonds when mapping the happy path. But that makes the whole process questionable because most processes are not just the happy path. There will be alternate paths and all unhappy paths that you have to look at. So we can now continue mapping this process just following what we saw earlier. So perform customer verification. You can always make the process small, reshape it, align it make it look good for the eyes for your customers and then you keep um, perform customer verification after uh, it says the next step is determine customer requirement requirements now that we've put in determine customer requirement let's go to our next step which is says perform affordability um, then now uh, when you're performing at affordability um, the customer can pass affordability or they might fill affordability. So let's um, bring the diamond. So you can put simply uh, did customer pass with a question mark. If yes, what do we do? If no, what do we do? So if yes, we can go up here and it says complete application. If no, you let's go back down here. If no, what do we do? We review affordability. Form of affordability review. Perform affordability review. So this is a no. And anytime you use a diamond, always make sure that there is a yes or no or an answer to the question you've asked type it onto the link so that anyone who's reading your um your process diagram will know what you have put on the process map so that they can also understand and communicate it clearly to various stakeholders when yeah so and then you, you should continuously always make sure that all your process maps are linked and it can be traced in a sequential uh, manner. If 
your processes are everywhere, you would lose your stakeholders. So that sequence where I, the stakeholder knows I can go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The steps should be sequential to aid the stakeholder. Of course, there'll be some parallel tax of multiple tax that will be performed certain times, but make sure that the sequence is quite clear and people can easily follow through it. So if we go to the alternate path, what did they say is this? Let's just finish the few steps on the alternate. Request further details. I can drag this here a bit. And then what I'll do is to bring this one closer. I'll move this one here. Then I'll delete this. I'll come and click this, move it here. And then I'll go back here. So let me put this here. Put this here. So you can always be moving your diagram around and making sure that your diagram looks very presentable to your stakeholders. Request further details. And when you request further details, you can add a diamond and say, did customer, was, or was customer successful? Was customer successful? Question mark. If no, or if no, let's say, if no, what do we do? Let's send email. To apply in three months with documents and then from there we can end the process. So we can say end of process. This is for uh, the alternate path. Yeah. If, if customer was successful, so I can then click yes here. I was request further details. No. Click on this, delete this, click on that, delete it. If yes, complete application. So uh, what we can do is customer successful says set up loan application. Set up loan application. And then what we can do from here, set up loan application. And then from what we've seen, I can move this a bit this way and then move it here. Let me click this, delete this, click this, delete this. Then say that if set up loan application, make payment. Make payment. And then make, make payments, 
send send confirmation email email of loan application and payment schedule loan application and payment schedule payment schedule and then from there we can end the process there can be multiple ends if you don't want to create an end that will just crisscross and cut across various stages so let's say end and once you set up loan application we can say as there should be data storage to hold all this application in the system anyway so we've just looked at mapping a process i'll go through the steps again much slowly on the key items we need to bring to mapping this particular process so to map this loan process what did i do even though i did it uh, quickly i think i can walk we can walk through it step by step for you to be able to uh, map it yourself very easily so this is the process i intended to map and it says a level one process but i think yep it could be a level two or three process so I'd, to map the process first i looked for my stencil which was the swim lane stencil i brought the swim lane on this on, onto the chart and then brought a few other swim lanes and started mapping the process when you are mapping for the first time, everything looks fiddly. But the moment you practice, practice and map other processes, it makes the whole process very easy using um, Visio. So what I'm going to do is I want to save this and then map another, another steps involved in this whole process. So save us copy online uh, loan process zoom loan process resume save so it's saving online so we, we've mapped the loan process now let's go through the process of mapping it step by step using a new diagram so we've brought out a new diagram we go to shapes we do have swim lanes so once you see the swim lane you click it we are not using the vertical we are using the horizontal so we bring the first here and then we can bring it down to have to create yeah so now you've got your first cross-functional flow chart which will help you um, map processes so let's put a name there customer service function so we can always extend this first before we bring another one yeah. so we want to add an additional swim lane we bring this we try and click it to it and once we see the line coming up we leave it the line is a clue that um, it's intersected and or it's integrated and it's working okay we want to bring three we can bring four we can bring five 
But we are bringing all of this based on the number of actors we have. In this particular exercise, we only have three actors. So there's no need bringing all the other act, um, swim links into the process. So we said the system can be an actor. And then we will have a function as back office as an actor. Yeah. We said we always need a title for all our uh, process mapping exercises. Now that we have a good understanding of the overall stencil, what we will aim to do is to bring other shapes to support us. So we go into the basic shapes. We bring the ellipses. The ellipses is for the start, and the ellipses is also used as the end for the process. So let's start. And then when we want to look at activities, we can always start by picking an activity in a rectangle and we say our activities are verb nouns. What do we mean by verb nouns? They are actions that we will take to support the entire process. So we can say check customer availability. or review customer availability. Has availability passed will be a question we will ask in our diamonds. So when moving the boxes around you can always um, cut, pick a box move it around and once you see the plus sign but if you want to connect two boxes put make sure the arrowhead comes out and then you can connect those so let's see i want to connect this um, to I, this so i've waited for the arrowhead i've got this it's connected but what if i create one and i want to connect it is the same principle click on it see the arrowhead and use it to connect it so you've got your ellipsis you've got your rectangle you've got your diamond and then you can always have an ellipse to end So you can always have an ellipsis to end the process when mapping the process. Yeah, whilst process mapping can look a bit daunting, once you've done the initial legwork, which we've discussed in our previous chapter, this particular step works easily because you are moving items around and you are making sure that the presentation looks very good for your stakeholders. You can share it with the stakeholders as a PDF document, or you can share it with stakeholders as a process map. For those who have process maps, uh, Visio, they can download it and then review it and send you feedback. What are some of the tips that um, over the years I've found very useful? On the desktop app, you are able to number the processes so you can also number your processes and that makes it easier for stakeholders to follow your process when um, you've done it of course if you've got a big process you want to activate it on the desktop function i don't know whether uh, it's been fixed here you want to auto activate it on your desktop function and that can or on your online function and that can automatically start creating numbers as you go and when you remove a step you don't have to come and clean it all up because you've used the manual process. You can just go back, delete a particular step, and it will automatically uh, update all your other 
um, chat items and then you've got your process well done if you have any questions please feel free to get in touch but why is visio a good tool to map processes visio is a versatile diagramming tool that can help you map um, swim lanes process charts and various other um, system solution diagrams and this also can be used by um, people in other professions like the IT field to help them understand the process. You are mapping the current state which represents a complex set of processes which will interlink with each other. Visio enables those interlinking elements where you could connect an item from one page to another. So you can have multiple pages and those pages will help you just continue mapping processes. I think there's a limit to the number of um, processes you can have in a chat, but for what I see, you can always have multiple tabs linking all your processes together. And it's something that you can always share with your stakeholders. Yeah. So what did we start with? We started with a swim lane, picked it up, brought it into the chat, saw the title, enter the title, loan processing. And then from there, we've just brought in additional swim lanes, additional, more additional swim lanes. And these additional swim lanes are things that the actors will be using. So we've got customer service, customer service, then you've got your system, your system can also be an actor, and then you've also got your back office team, they can also be an actor. So here is our steps to effective process mapping. Once you map the process, check, 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 make sure you've got your connectors, for your diamonds, make sure your diamonds have um, a yes, no, or anything to answer it. There should be no, there should be a, um, there should be no instance where a diamond has been added to the chat and the diamond has not got an outcome which could be negative or positive or happy path or non-happy path. All diamonds have the happy path and unhappy path. And constantly, when you have the diamond on your um, diagram, make sure you can link it between the happy and non-happy path. Please do get in touch if you've got any questions on Microsoft Visio. We've looked at why to use Visio. We, took a, we signed into Visio. We looked at the Visio interface. Uh, we created our first diagram on Visio, which was the loan process, and then we saved it. And then from there, we added more tabs to Visio we work with shapes and stencils, and this is Visio 101. Once we master Visio 101, we can take Visio to the next step. If you've got any questions, please do feel free to get in touch. All the best in your Visio mapping process, and I look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.